Hello and welcome to a pro patch breakdown here at LOL Class. Let's take a look at this week's changes. So Brahm's Q mana cost went up with this new change. Not too big of a change, this is very slight. Uh, 10 mana each level, not big at all. The Kaelin change is not too big. 20 mana cost decrease at all levels and cooldown goes down by 4 seconds at level 1. Uh, a lot of players don't even get traps until level 8. So this change will make it that they might get it a little bit earlier, but overall it's not too big, not going to affect your laning much. Um, this means there's going to be more traps in the lane. So for Darius, this is a much needed uh, nerf to him. He's been insanely strong in solo queue, and presumably he'd be strong in competitive play if we've been seeing competitive matches. Um, they reduced the healing per hit to 12% from 15%, and that's a, a lot of missing health that is much needed for him. If you think about 15% of your max HP when you're um, something like 3,000 life, or um, of your current HP, let's say you're low and you have 3,000 life, you're going to end up healing for almost 1,000 um, health. And now that will be a little bit reduced, around like 800, 700. And um, it'll just be a noticeable nerf that you can actually feel like you can kill Darius now in between his Qs. Um, his maximum heal was increased to 36 from 30. This kind of um, reverts the change for team fights for Darius. Like if he's in the middle of a team fight, he can still heal for for um, as much as before, or even more than before. But the difference is that in the small skirmishes where he excels the most when he's running away from ganks, etc., he won't be um, healing for um, as much, and it will be able to, and you will be able to kill him. Also, um, the Q has a much needed mana increase. I don't think that this will hurt Darius that much because he doesn't have much mana problems anyway. But um, 30 mana for um, a spell that you spam every like two to three seconds. Uh, is pretty ridiculous when you consider how powerful this spell is and how much healing you get and how much utility. Um, now you can at least run out of mana in like those extended situations and you won't see videos on Reddit of Darius running around the whole base uh, for like two minutes straight just queuing everyone and healing to full. So for at least she's getting a small nerf to her spiderlings. The damage at max rank went down by 15 so she'll just be doing less damage than before, um, less sustained damage. Um, than before. And also her Spiderlings reduce damage from multi-target abilities is increased um, to 25%. So now they'll be a little bit tankier. Um, that, that reads kind of weird. Um, what I think it means is that it will take 25% reduced damage from AoE abilities. So there's some chance that people will try to AoE your spiders down. Um, the spiders survive with a little bit of uh, life and they're able to do a little bit more damage in the team fight. So Ezra Chain is actually decently big. It uh, his E now has a 0.5 bonus attack damage ratio. So even just by having a Doran's Blade, you're just gonna do five extra damage. And once you get other items, you just get a lot more damage. It's actually a fairly substantial change because Ezreal's one of his big weaknesses is doesn't do enough damage. And now his E does extra damage, so it's, it's always good. Ezreal right now isn't very strong, but with this change, it might push him to a situational pick. He won't be a strong pick, but at least it'll be maybe played a little bit. Fiora is also receiving a nerf for the world's patch. Um, her base HP is getting lowered and her base armor is getting lowered and her base HP per level. This is all just um, targeted at her early game training potential. Um, as it is right now, if she was one to be winning a champion and she was hitting their vitals, she would pretty much never lose a trade. But now in the early game with some of the base set uh, nerfs, you have to be more precise with um, the fights you take and you're going to need to hit your W um, on a decent amount of damage to end up winning the trade. So it's just pretty much um, making Fiora more skill reliant and less just face roll. Gameplay's receiving a nerf to his E, his barrels, which is pretty much where all of his damage comes from. The bonus physical uh, damage to champions was lowered from 60, 90, or lowered to 60, 90, 120, 150, and 180 from 80, 110, 140, 170, and 200, which is essentially just a 20 damage um, nerf at all levels so uh, you'll just take a little bit uh, less damage from the gank like E but honestly with the still the same scaling that it has in terms of um, AD uh, it'll still do decent damage like it won't just completely nerf gangplank out of the game also his E is uh, getting a small nerf where the armor that it ignores is going down from 50% to 40% and that will just uh, mean that Late game, if you do build armor versus gangplank, you won't feel like he's doing true damage to you still, which is the case right now. Uh, the Skarner E slow was reduced to 30 um, at the first rank and 50 at the last rank, so it's 15 at um, each rank. 
Uh, this will just mildly hurt Skarner. People aren't maxing E anymore, um, and pretty much the E is mainly used for the stun. So I don't think it will hurt Skarner that much. I think it will be the same strength as he is right now, but I didn't think he was super strong before, so I still think he'll be like a mid-tier jungle pick. I'm not super worried about Skarner popping up again. The Lulu chain is interesting. They're nerfing her scaling health by quite a bit. It's 8, 8 HP per level. Uh, it adds up. Um, but then they're making it so her passive, her picks, now triggers a one, one part of the spell thief. So you, get, you can get two spell thief rocks on one auto attack, which is actually pretty cool. But the nerf to her HP per level is also kind of sucks. I'm, I'm really not sure how I stand on this. I, I don't think it's a buff. I think it's really a nerf to support Lulu still. And it's a nerf to top and mid Lulu as well. So it seems like overall a nerf. But she's a very strong champion on... Um, and, being played in competitive play right now, so I understand this change. So the Mordecai change is actually a really big nerf. I mean, it's understandable considering how strong he is right now, but this is a huge change. It might pretty much just push him out of worlds uh, completely. So they're nerfing his base armor, buffing his armor per level slightly, very very little uh, on the buff. So overall, it's a nerf. And then his W is getting changed quite a bit. You pretty much reduce damage by half when you're stacked. And the cost of that used to be zero is now 25 health at level one. That's that's quite a bit actually. So you just can't spam for free anymore. And but then we deactivate it, you do additional damage. Um, healing goes down a little bit as well. So overall it's a it's a nerf. A uh, pretty big nerf. And I think it's gonna push him out of the worlds. Uh, most likely, but we'll see. He, he still has his annoying passive where he still gets extra EXP. So we'll see what happens. The Sin change is interesting. Sin is a champion who is really strong if you can land your skill shots and, and win your lane. She's kind of a lane bully. Kind of falls off a bit into the late game, but if you really get at her, you can still make her happen. So with the change that increases her mana per level, that could allow players who were hesitant on Sin to pick her back up. And the E bug fix really probably doesn't mean too much. The E always knocks back a set distance, so this doesn't increase the range of it or anything like that. Um, so only change is, is just extra mana, which does help her out a little bit. The Tom Kent change honestly doesn't do anything. They're like they they consider quality of life changes where it just makes things easier for players, um, but you rarely use your QW combo uh, and. It doesn't make it better, it makes it so that people can do it more often, but again, it doesn't really matter. Same for the E chain, it's more of like kind of a bug fix, and it just helps people see his HP easier, and gets the nerf in a way. Um, but honestly, it doesn't do anything for him, it doesn't make him strong, it doesn't make him weak, it's just a quality of life change. So this push change is interesting, it doesn't actually do much for him, but it's gonna help a champion that's surging up, be played a little bit more. So basically all it is is this, as you're taking damage when you press a Q, it takes you 6 seconds normally to get into stealth after you press Q if you're getting hit. But this change, it's only 4.5 seconds. Doesn't really matter, only really matters for when you're trying to avoid a gank. So, interesting, but not too big. There's been two small changes to Vagar. Um, the first one is your Q now gives AP on champion kill and assist instead of just champion kill. So that'll be a little bit easier to stack, like in team fights, if you hit a Q on multiple people and then they get killed later on in that fight, you'll be gaining AP for that, which is nice for Vagar, but he still is going to have a lot of problems with matchups in the mid lane. Um, and the other change is that W, um, the charge, or the the, cool, the timer for when your W is casting, there's a 1.2 second delay, and that's going to start at the beginning of your cast instead of like once the sphere appears. So that's a little bit nice for Vagar, you're losing a little bit um, of, of time that it's in the air, so maybe it's a little bit easier to hit on targets that uh, aren't stunned, but the same Vanguard combo is going to remain where you stun first and then try to line that um, into the W. So this change to Zyra is actually quite interesting. Zyra's plans are actually really dumb. They attack the wrong targets, they don't attack sometimes, so this change should hopefully help the plants throw more of a brain, and that's pretty interesting. I'm, I'm curious to see how it turns out, but so far, it looks like a change that would be like, okay, yay, she's doing more damage now. So that's overall a buff, I'd say. So changes to Zeke's is obviously a nerf. It, they're nerfing the armor by five, and they're nerfing the charter duration, 
which I believe is when you're trying to charge up the the Zeke's Harbinger to 100 and each time you charge up there's like a little countdown of 8 seconds so if you uh, wait 8 seconds and it goes back to 0 but they nerf that to 5 not too big of a change um, if you're fighting you're just gonna be in range to charge up anyways so overall it's a slight nerf not gonna change too much uh, as expected from a patch for worlds uh, not a big change at all there's been a small much needed change to warrior where they gave back the 5 ad that they originally cut from the item so now it does 45 attack damage and 10 percent um, cooldown reduction 10 percent 10 armor pen um, flat and this is just like the same stats uh, minus just the, the 5 ad on live so um this is a good buff for warrior there's going to be situations where now you can build warrior on things like Rek'Sai and it's not as punishing as before where you felt like if you didn't have the Cinder Hulk you just don't scale. Um, I think it was a fine change, I think it's pretty needed and I think it should be good for AD based junglers. Um, specifically I'm looking at Lee Sin and Rek'Sai with this change. Devourer has received a slight nerf where um, now it does 50 magic damage on hit instead of 60 magic damage on hit. Um, I don't think this is going to matter too much um, for Sated Devourer because no one's going to build the item anyway, so it's just like a nerf for solo queue, I assume. It's not going to affect competitive play except for, I guess, High, because he's the only person that has built that item competitive in the last like six months. Match with Pressure or some other matchups as well. You scale really well into late game and you can snowball like crazy as well to do your increased farming. Once you get Triforce, you can clear the wave in one shot with your EQ. Uh,